Size matters, especially in Rust. Bigger bases mean more attention, and that's why we're looking at something that looks quite small, but packs a mean punch. With over 27 rockets to raid before expanding, and an upkeep that a solo could manage, it's time to show you your new base. Today we're looking at a base that combines the amazing god bunker mechanic from Game Lights with some good old fashioned floor stacking. Now combining these into a base can be a little difficult, and it's something I advise you practice on a build server before taking to a live server. That said, once done, this will create an amazingly secure and compact base. Doing so correctly is going to make it a lot harder for raiders and also make you an unappealing target. Starting off with eight, two square foundations, we go ahead and place a ramp. Going about halfway up the ramp, you're going to see this piece of twig here that looks kind of like a scimitar. Above that, you'll see a straight piece, and we're going to place a small box just above that straight piece. Once placed, we're going to kind of creep up next to it, and we're going to pull out our building plan, switching to a triangle foundation. We're going to place the first one rather high up, enough so that we don't have to worry about any of our honeycombing. Next, without moving your mouse at all, we're going to very carefully move to the right. And then once it's blue, we're going to bring it back into the original foundation. You're going to want to bring it far enough that it stops moving and we're going to place it there. Next, we're going to go ahead and destroy these foundations using either a spear or getting a TC down quickly, but a spear or a crossbow works much better. Then we're going to place a square next to this raised tri triangle and destroy the raised triangle. Next to the lower triangle, we're going to connect a new triangle and destroy the original one. Next, we're going to place a square foundation here and we're going to just make sure really quickly that we've done everything correctly by placing a square, two triangles and two squares. You are going to want to just make sure that you can place them, not actually needing to place them as placing them early can get in the way. And we're going to come back over here and we're going to start closing this up. You're going to want to leave the roof piece open as well as one of your walls and the other side, we're going to place a floor frame. At this point, you can go ahead and upgrade everything except for this foundation. And if you're worried about this getting destroyed, it's very much worth it to upgrade this foundation as well as place a wall right here. By placing this wall, we actually connect it to the build and make it so that it won't suffer from decay as it's now connected. That said, you'll still need your TC down to actually prevent the decay. Next off of this square foundation, we're going to place another one. And then we're going to place nine triangles. On the ninth triangle, we're going to place a square foundation and destroy all of your triangles all the way back. You're going to want to also destroy both of these twig squares. Coming back, we're going to build from squares all the way out until we reach back to our base and make sure you place this final one connected to here. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and upgrade this one and destroy all of these. Now we're going to do it one more time, placing a square and nine triangles. At the ninth triangle, place your square and go back. This time only destroy the square that's outside of it. And then once here, we're going to place two half walls. You'll want to make sure you place these half walls from the outside, as otherwise it might connect to the wrong pieces. As well, you'll also want to place a floor piece connected to this half wall, again from the outside. At this point, you can go ahead and destroy all of these extras, and we're going to make sure we didn't mess anything up. Placing a square foundation here, and a square foundation here. Next, you can go ahead and upgrade these, and make your way into the base. Go ahead and upgrade this piece right here, and then we're going to just make sure that the bunker works. First, we're going to try to place the floor piece to no avail. Then by coming on the inside here, we're going to place a door frame, and then go ahead and place another floor piece. At this point, you see that we have indeed created the god bunker correctly, and if this is destroyed, it does open straight up. Now in here, you do have a, quite a few options of where to place things, but basically, you're just going to need access to up here, and we're going to need to place a doorway. That is because this is obviously not the most secure base yet, and closing this up is definitely going to help us. 
Whether you use a furnace or you just use some shelving, you're gonna need to find a way to get up. I prefer just putting my tier one there while I'm getting this built. At this point, we can safely secure the main parts of the build and kind of build the rest as we get the materials. Now it is important to know that we do need to get our TC back here in the corner and any shelving that you're gonna need in here, you're gonna need to place early. That's because if you attempt to do so later, you might actually mess up the stability of the build. So it's very important you follow along with how you build as anything that does connect to this floor piece right here could actually completely destroy the bunker. Because I wanna create a shelf, we're gonna come down to here and place a foundation, a half piece and a wall. Ghosting again through, we can come inside and see that I've created a shelf. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that shelf and it's gonna leave me enough room to still be able to create my walls. Next, coming back outside, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the honeycombing down. That's because you do need the honeycomb down in order to finally get this done and start doing the floor stacking. So first I'm gonna remove this half wall here and I'm gonna place the squares on both sides as I'd shown earlier. Next on each side, you're gonna place triangles in this fashion here, which is gonna bring you around to this side. We are gonna destroy the temporary shelving that I've created and we're gonna go ahead and place a square. Off of the square, we place a triangle, another square, and a triangle, and a square. Placing a final triangle in the middle, and coming over here and placing two triangles like so. At this point, we can actually remove all of these excess twig pieces, as they're not really needed, but they can be used to secure the structure a little more, if you'd prefer to have that security. That said, for this build, I really don't think it's necessary as it's gonna cost basically at least three walls in any direction that a raider tries to get through this base. At this point, go ahead and upgrade all of these foundations. We're also gonna wanna go ahead and add walls to basically the interior of this entire area. Finally, you should have something looking like this. Now we do want to close off these gaps, making sure to connect to the lower walls and not to the higher pieces. It's very important when building a bunker like this that you keep the bunker open while you're working on the build. Keeping the bunker open is going to help make sure that you don't accidentally do something that might cause the bunker to glitch out. In addition, between building stuff and as you take steps, you might wanna make sure that you can still place the bunker. That's because sometimes some stability changes to the build can really mess things up and you don't wanna find out when it's too late. Another good measure so you don't accidentally upgrade the wrong piece here, now that we have those exterior honeycombs, is we're gonna place another floor frame. Placing this floor frame underneath our original one and then coming over here and placing another floor piece. In this sense, we've already created our initial floor stack and made this center piece much more secure than it appears from the outside. Now at this point, it's very much worth noting that once you've got this floor stacked, you can actually add a ladder hatch. You'll wanna make sure that you add the ladder hatch to the lower floor stack. In doing so, we'll still have plenty of room to add the upper floor stack as long as you've got that wall in place underneath. Now that we've reached this stage here, I do actually like to go a little bit further right here and we're gonna add a shelf into this room. Now, you're gonna notice when you're building on these raised pieces that you sometimes run into issues, but it can usually be solved just by looking down. Building our shelf into this room, we can remove these extra pieces and that's gonna give me a little bit of quick drop storage. I don't recommend using that as quick drop storage until you've actually got this area up here sealed but it's gonna work for me for now. Next, coming over here, I highly recommend all of these side pieces be filled in, adding that little bit of extra protection to the interior. Now, if you do want to upgrade these interior to metal or high qual metal, you should leave this open as you're gonna to need to do so before you close it up. My personal recommendation would be to upgrade it to this with the entire two x two core being high qual metal and the next outer layer being metal frags. 
This is gonna increase your raid costs already this early to 23 rockets to that core. Now, if that bunker was sealed up, getting in there would not be an easy task. Of course, it is a little cheaper if they knew to blow into this one instead of here, because this is floor stacked. Now, if you're worried about this metal being revealed, it actually gets covered fairly nicely once we move on to the next step. Coming here, we're gonna go ahead and place walls into these areas here, doing the same on both sides, and go ahead and upgrade those to stone. Next, go ahead and seal those up. And then we're gonna add in our roof pieces, adding in a wall to the left side and a roof piece. This is gonna take away the optional raid path to here, which is much more of a vulnerability and covers it up very nicely. Do the same on all of your sides and we'll have sealed in that raid option. With this all done, I do like to just come, come back here and honeycomb this spot, covering that last little bit of metal, and then I'll start sealing and working on this area here. Basically coming around entirely on both sides, and then closing in this front area here, adding a window and a doorway. Create our standard airlock and a window. Once that's done, we can go ahead and place another doorway here, and this is gonna act as just a furnace room. When you're sealing this up, we're gonna wanna leave this open as we're gonna use this to go up to the next floor. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add double door frames to all the sides here. And again, you're gonna notice that it's a little difficult, but if you're aiming down, it should work without any problem. Because this does become a loot drop room, I do recommend also floor stacking in there. Even if it's just floor stacking it to, to stone, it's gonna make it a lot harder for a top-down raider to get access to that loot. That said, the next step is kind of up in the air. If you plan on using garage doors, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't floor stack this room right here. That's because if you floor stack right here, you'll actually not be able to close the garage doors once you open them up. That said, it's not a big deal as you could very easily upgrade this to metal and it wouldn't be that much of an eyesore. That said, if you're much more security focused and you do want that floor stack here, you can achieve that very easily by just using double doors instead. If you use double doors, you're not gonna have any issues as you can very easily still click on the door. By upgrading to an armored door, you can avoid the issues entirely and actually get more security, though it is a lot more expensive. For that reason, I usually just opt to keep that open and instead I'm gonna use my garage doors. Garage doors are a lot cheaper and they offer great value for what they are. Next coming here, you are gonna need either a ladder or a ladder hatch. When working on the third floor, you're gonna wanna make sure you place this door frame before you actually close up this area with the ladder hatch. That's because it gets a little funky and you might even need to pick up the ladder hatch in order to get it placed. Because we are doing some floor stacking as well as some other weird mechanics, this base can get a little finicky at times and it can, it can take a little bit of trial and error to get everything placed. As you can see, it's really not liking me placing things and I'm having to go on the outside in some cases just to get it placed. That said, once it's all down, it does work fairly nicely, and you still have plenty of expansion options for the roof here. Anytime you are expanding, you do just wanna make sure that you're building off the appropriate pieces. However, this floor doesn't matter too much as there's no bunker mechanic on this floor to mess up. Coming over here, we're gonna go ahead and take care of these two rooms on the side, placing a double doorway here with a garage door and a window will be placed here. But before we do that, we are gonna create a temporary shelf. Destroy this and upgrade these. It's here, we can place four large boxes and thanks to that box update, four large boxes happens to be quite a lot of storage. As well, coming over to here and placing a large box here, a small box between and another large box. Place a temporary shelf here, and that's gonna help you place in a couple more small boxes. 
though this is completely optional and does make looting a little bit harder. While still definitely doable, it does require you stand in the middle whenever you're trying to loot. Over here, we're gonna close this off with a window, window providing a good amount of security. Next, we're gonna place a furnace or two right here, just taking advantage of some extra space. Placing a few more furnaces just over here. And then coming over here. Here, we're gonna place our bed, although you could use this as an additional storage room. I much prefer to have a respawn room available. Keeping in mind that this respawn room is somewhat griefable once they get to this point as they will still be able to damage the box in the bed, throwing a lock on that box does get rid of that issue. Having this respawn room, especially as a solo, is just too handy in my opinion to skip up on it. Coming downstairs into the core of our base, we do have a little bit of redecorating to do, starting off by placing a box in this corner. If done correctly and placed tight against the wall, you should be able to place another box here. And we can come up here and do the same thing. You can also get some small boxes in here, but it actually might be worth your while to get rid of one of these large boxes as well, because again, we do need to place this frame here. Now, when placing this, you wanna make sure you place it from the inside here, as if you do place it from outside over here, it'll actually grant extra stability to the roof pieces. You'll need to make sure you've got just enough room and unfortunately having the box here can make it a lot harder, but it's still doable. At this point, I'm gonna bring my tier one or tier two upstairs and I'm gonna put a tier three down here. Starting off by placing a locker right here, we'll have just enough room to place a tier three nice and snug. Of course, underneath that tier three, we have plenty of room for a box. Another box can go right here, though I do recommend placing it this way just so you have no issues placing this. Now right here is where you're going to place your bags. You do need to make sure you have bags in the bottom area of this bunker, as that's how you're going to open it up later. This is perfect if you are playing as a duo because you have just enough room for two bags down here. If you did place another bag right here before you place this shelf, you could get a third, but it's definitely not necessary. At this point, coming up here, I'd take my extra tier 2 or tier 1, and I'd place it right here. Giving myself that access up here next to my extra storage boxes, but the bulk of it being secure downstairs. Of course, here we're going to be placing a window, and basically just your standard airlock. Having one door opening in, and one out. This means that if both are open, a player couldn't go deep, and this is as far as they could get. As long as we have a door here and locked, that means they're getting nothing. With all said and done, even before we go on to add a shooting floor or any other upgrades you might want to add, the security of this base is ridiculous. While it looks like a fairly small compact 2x1, it's in fact so much more and definitely not worth the Raiders trouble. If you guys like this build, if you guys like this base design, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Until next time, enjoy your wipe and peace out.